boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Glad you made it. It's another social production. We're doing it on Friday, June the 14th, 2024. Thank you for joining me once again. If it's your first time, buckle up, buckle down. If you've been with me from the get-go, shout out to all of you out there, wherever you are. Oh, we're a little syndicate growing each and every day. Wherever you're tuning in from, if it's anywhere in Canada, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, what's gone? What's going on? Wagwan, everybody. Down south in the United States, further down south in that, Mexico, further down south, uh, South America, it's over there in Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica. Papua New Guinea, as per usual. One day, I'll see you there. We're out here in the elements. Behind me, I've built trains. I've built train tracks. Billions of dollars spent. Because I want you to have the most action-packed episode of a podcast that you can get out here. Hope you're queefing out there, whatever you're doing. I'm out here in the elements. Today's Friday. We're going to keep it a loose day. We are on a little teeny tiny bridge. We'll see if anybody will join us today. And if not, it'll just be yours truly and your beautiful sexy selves out there. Sons and daughters of bitches out there. Man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday, and we are outside. Things are moving along as as scheduled, as regularly scheduled program. That's the way we like it. But let's get right into it. Let's not beat around the bush. We're here to talk about one thing and one thing only, or perhaps many things. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Where's the best place to come? Where is the best place to come? Man, this camera's awful close today. It's a lack of space, not gonna lie to you. But it's okay. We like it tight and personal. But where's the best place to come? Is it the mouth? Is it the vaginals? Is it in the asshole? These are some of the questions that we'll be going through. Is it best to come in someone's mouth? Uh, the pros, I'll say this, you know, the benefits of coming in someone's mouth is that uh, they get to, it's, you know, if you're into tasting stuff, if you're like a sommelier for cum, that's probably the best place to take it in the mouth. Gargle it a little bit, but don't swallow immediately. Let it sit for a second. See how that feels. In the mouth, I'll say it's easier to carry around. It's easier. It's you know what? It's not going to stick to anything because otherwise, if you were to if you were to come on someone's hand, for example, it'll for sure stick, and you don't want it to stick. You want it to you want it to be transported, let's say. And that's where we're at today. Transportation, a little bit of the old cum, a little bit of the old jism, if you will. So the mouth, you could say, is one of the best carriers of jizz. Because it doesn't stick to anything. You can easily have it transported from A to B within 10 to 15 minutes. And if it's any later than that, it's free of charge. You know, carrying jizz in your mouth is also good because let's say you don't want the jizz to necessarily be mixed with too many other fluids that'll make it hard to decipher after it's been taken down to the old science lab. To, to see what it, we, we can check out the chemical compounds. We can check out the molecules. We can see where it's at. We can see what it, you know, a little bit of spit mixed in with the old jizz. It's okay. It's not gonna be a big deal. You'll still be able to determine what's what doing a little bit of chemistry, but that's just basic chemistry. So right off the bat, the mouth is being a contender, a heavy hitter, and I, for one, I'm a fan. Let's say you wanna, you want, you wanna get rid of some jizz, or you'd like somebody to pass it back to you, again, the mouth would make a great place for you to jizz in. Because somebody could have your jizz in their mouth and hold it there for as long as you like. An hour, two hours, three and a half, half a day. Watch my jizz, will you, for an afternoon while I'm going to the doctor's appointment, won't you? Oh, what a wonderful neighbor, what a wonderful friend, what a wonderful family member, people you can rely on, people you can count on. Fantastic. Put it in their mouth. Upon return, they can spit it back in your mouth. And there you go. 
not contaminated. That's the main key. Jizzing in mouth keeps it from minimal contamination. Now, mind you, if you put, we're not talking about, you're like, what if you just put in a container, then there's no contamination at all? We're not talking about, we're talking about carrying it on the person, carrying it on your body. That's the most important thing. So do not lose sight of what is important. The most important thing here is to keep your jizz nice and clean or as clean as possible. That's the most important thing here. I'll say this, if you are putting the jizz in the mouth, it's best to not mix it with food because that it'll be very hard to separate what is jizz and what is food later on down there. If you were to recollect, if you were to gather up your jizz after, it'd be very difficult to tell if it's just jizz or if it's mixed with food. So do not do that. That's one of the downsides of putting it in. If somebody's chewing, if somebody's having a meal, for example, do not go dispensing that bodily fluid in their mouth because if they're chewing let's say i don't know someone someone happens to like spaghetti someone happens to like a little bit of pasta someone happens to like a little bit of pizza ravioli guacamole anchovies nachos doritos these are just some examples of what you should not be looking for if somebody's chewing on food do not jizz in their mouth that way you will definitely 100 percent contaminate your jizz with the food thousands of families how many divorces have I seen because somebody jizzed in someone's mouth and they were already chewing on some food? Horrible mistake, fellas. Ladies, uh, pick it up a little bit, all right? Pick up the slack. Where, where if you're chewing on stuff, be like, hey, 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 hey there, Chris. Hold on a second. Why, let, me, let me swallow this piece of uh, shawarma for a second. Then I'll get to the old, you know, jizz in the mouth. So that's, that's what you do. Hold on a second. Do not jump to conclusions. Wait till they swallow their food. Then insert your jizz in the mouth again. That's one great option right there, right off the bat. It's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. The camera is probably shaking a little bit, but that's the shit that you don't see. That's the shit that the industry don't want you to see. Once you're, once the wind is with the, once the elements are coming in and oh man, we, we, I don't have seven bodybuilders holding down this camera and the, and the iPad and the, and the, and the tripod, there's no iPad, I don't know why it's the iPad, but like, you know, the iPhone and the tripod, there's no seven, I don't have seven bodybuilders holding down the tripod, because I like to be raw, I like to be, I like the camera to shake a little bit, that's how you know this shit's real, that's how you know this shit sticks, like jizz. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me once again, it is Friday. Where else can you put the jizz? You say, oh man, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> it's Friday. Where else can you? Man, the many places. But we're talking about human body and the orifices that it has. Let's talk vaginal for a second. I would say, although the mouth is probably a number one contender in terms of like, you know, for carrying purposes, for hey, would you mind holding on to this for a second, if you will? But the vagina is my personal favorite to deposit the old cum. Honestly, it feels like a match made in heaven. Uh, it feels natural. It feels like it's meant to be deposited in there. I'll tell you, sometimes I'll go without depositing some jizz in a vag for several months. Uh, you know, speaking from experience, it's now been a year, uh, but who's counting anyway? Uh, it does feel right. It feels like it belongs in there. It feels like it sticks, but it doesn't. But it doesn't like stick too hard, so that it's like you don't want something that's like let go of my jizz. You'll say spit it back, won't you? It'll release some jizz. So if you put it in the vag and come inside the puss, it's a great environment for you're like it's too dark for the jizz. The jizz need light. Uh, that's debatable. You know, some say does it need light? Does it need less light? It's completely up for debate. I myself think the vag is a perfect place for you to deposit the old semen uh, in terms of, again, it's spacious. Hell of, a, hell of a lot of space to work with. Do not be like, how much can I fit? Do not limit yourself. I don't want you to say, I don't know if I can fill up the entire thing. I've seen a lot of guys panic. I've seen a lot of ladies panic as well. They're like, we don't know how we're gonna fill this empty void uh, called the vag. Little by little, little by little, do not try to fill it up all at once. I have seen people pull their backs and be out of, you know, competition for about three to seven months, depending on the injury, stretch prior, 
do not go cold turkey and then get in there and then be like i'm gonna fill this badge up to the rim on my first bus amateur and that's just i don't want you to hurt yourself remember plenty of space the lighting could be better it is quite dark and that we are I am trying to I'm trying to start a local initiative just to get a little bit better lighting inside the vag for the time being I'm not a complainer I'm not going to sit out here and tell you oh the vag doesn't need you know the vag doesn't have enough light so I'm not going to deposit some semen in here I've been known to deposit the semen in the vag despite the fact that there is no lighting uh, you're like what about what about your what about your iPhone what about your Android can't you use the flashlight it's just not the same if I use the flashlight you're like what about what about if you were to hang a chandelier in there honestly I'm working on it try to get it going it's a it's a whole red tape situation I don't know we'll see I'm working on it no promises you're like what about candles they tend to burn and people some people like hot wax. Some people like a little bit of burnt candle wax dripping on their body. Me personally, I'm not a fan. Unless you're going to do the entire body. Because I don't want to just get burnt in and around the cock area. If I'm going to be burning, I want to be burning around all around my body. Uh, even inside my mouth. I want you to open my mouth and just pour the hot candle wax in my mouth. Because a lot of I've seen people, they drip a little bit on their chest and they're like, oh, this is this is borderline tantric. This is borderline Kama Sutra. This is borderline, you know, hot yoga. Nah, fam. Open up all the holes. Open up all the orifices, CCs, and pour it in. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the vag makes a great place for it to deposit some beautiful semen and some jizz. Do not be alarmed again by the lack of lighting. You're like, I don't, I, what, I've, I've deposited jizz in the vag. It's so dark in there, I can't find it. Give it time. If you give it enough time, you'll notice that it will pop its head out. That's the beauty. The, the, the way we've designed the vag is for it to spit out the semen afterward. So, really, it's what you, what you get out is what you put in. Remember that. What you get out is what you put in. Another great reason for you to deposit the semen inside the vag is that vaginal fluid too has a clear or creamish or white texture or color to it, which makes it blend in. So if you're like, man, I am, I'm extremely anal when it comes to the color of my semen. Back in, let's say, 98, you mixed your semen with some food coloring and you got kind of like a cool purple. Got like a glow-in-the-dark purple fluorescent jizz, which was night for one, which was great for one night, one evening. But then uh, you couldn't sleep. You couldn't sleep at night because you turn off the lights and, you know, you, it was a motel. It was a hotel. And there was some black light in the background just flickering. It says open 24-7. And it shun it, it shun through the windows because there were no blinds on this on this little motel that you were staying in, and you couldn't catch sleep because all the jizz that you dispensed happened to be fluorescent. So that kind of put a bad taste in your mouth. You're like, you know what? It was fun when I was a little bit younger. Now that I'm a little bit more mature, I don't need this shit. I need my jizz to be just you know uh, off white, you know, just a little bit, you know, like we're talking eggshell white. We're talking, you know. Uh, chalk white we're talking just you know uh just cream color so i don't want to mix it with any again the vag makes a great space for you to deposit some semen the colors will not bleed into each other unless i should warn you unless your female partner happens to be on her period then you are risking getting some sort of a pinkish you know some sort of a off red it'd be, it'd be very similar to if you were to mix mayonnaise with ketchup very similar texture very similar taste number uh, you know uh, hack number 765 if you are running low on mayonnaise and ketchup at home you're like how do i get that same pink color with the texture and the flavor jizz 
mixed with you know a little bit of blood clot i'm not gonna be holding out on you and telling you some people are like you know i'll i'll have to i give it away i i've got the info i like to give i like to share and that's just what we do around here so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls now that we've covered the most basic depository places for you to go out and deposit some of that human bodily fluid aka the jism aka the cums aka semen aka baby batter aka the elixir of life aka milk on tap aka sticky icky aka you, you get the idea we've talked about two great places but we're not done just yet we're just getting started we're just getting started ladies and gentlemen where else can you deposit the jizz i would say again the butthole makes a great place for you to deposit some jizz if you're wondering you're like i'm not a mouth person i'm not a vag person i would like to is there any other option is there an alternative if i don't like to jizz in the mouth or i don't like to jizz in the vag is there some place else that i could yes yes the butthole makes a great space uh the beauty of it is that you know the thing with the mouth and the vag is that it, it's again somebody could be talking somebody could be queefing or they got loose lips and we love the loose lips but nonetheless, but nonetheless it drips out you're like i need someone to hold on to my jizz and keep it there contain it make sure it doesn't go anywhere in that case if you find yourself to be identifying with this third person or person c then the asshole would make a great depository i'm just saying it's hard to get something to leak out unless the individual would like it to leak out if they're not willing to leak out it will not leak out one time one time man i i shit you not jizz in the ass stayed in there for about 30 37 to 42 hours would not leak we were going for a record did we break it no i think there are longer held jisms in the asshole but we're not here to be like oh this is about setting the bar too high this is about you know we're not trying to hold people back we're trying to say that this is something we could do together if you've set a record past 37 hours with jizz in your asshole or leave a comment how did you do it how long did you keep it for what did you do with it after these are all the questions that the internet is asking and the world is frankly thirsting for that and why are we here what's the meaning of life but again who's to put these questions in sequence of importance and of priority not this, not this guy I, I tell you, not this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are there any downsides of putting the jizz in the asshole? Man, <laughs> if, I had a, if I had a penny for every time someone asked that question, you'd be worthless because money's kind of devaluing at a very quick pace and been hearing something about the petrol dollar pulling out I, I don't I don't even know what that means basing the dollar of the petrol on the petrol of the oil and the dollar of the the inflated and the, the I don't know people are I don't know inflation and I, I I don't know money talk I'm not a money guy I'll, I'll be honest never been I like to be they also say words of affirmation and and, and and what you speak will is more likely to come to practice, to come to fruition, to come to life, to come to maturation, to come to fruition and all that. So I am a big time money guy. I take it back. Big time money guy, this guy. Big time, the biggest money guy on this, this guy. Love money, biggest money guy. Like money, this guy, money guy. This guy, money guy. Money guy all day, every day, this guy. Money, money stacks so high that I don't even, I don't even take the elevator anymore. 
I don't even take the, I don't even get on the trampoline to jump on the top floor of any building. Stacks of money, this guy, money guy. Uh, I don't even, I don't even use toilet paper, money guy, this guy. I don't even, when I'm sleeping, I have pillows, but I burn them right before I sleep and I stack a whole bunch of hundred thousands, thousands of dollars. I spend thousands of dollars and I burn them and I, and I turn them into ash. So, so to make a, to make, make a cushy for your boy to rest his teeny little head so he can catch a couple of Z's money guy. Words of affirmation. You are what you speak. You are what you eat. You are what you put in and put out. You are, you're something. I don't know what it is, but you're something. I'll tell you that. Big time money guy, this guy. What were you even talking about? Jizz in the old, the asshole. That's right. Benefits, it won't leak out. The cons of this shit is that, well, huh. It gets messy. It gets messy, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to break it to you. It gets messy. They don't talk about this shit, but it does get messy. If you're the type that, again, going back to like, keeping your jizz color intact and keeping it all man it's really windy out here so i'll tell you keeping your jizz color intact you're like I, I like it to be all white i like it to be all just like clear i like it to be all uh see-through i like it to be all jizz in the old app probably not the best spot i'll tell you it's probably gonna mix with some shit it'll probably mix with some sh and that's if you were to if you're the type of person that likes to give out jizz and take it back, you're and, and you like to take it back in the same format that you handed it out, the asshole's probably the last person or the, or, or last place rather you like to, you like to make that deposit. It'll it'll come out mixed with shit. That's you know. But unless unless I tell you unless that's your thing, unless you're looking for that, then that's then no harm, no foul. That's just you living your best life. Put it put it in the asshole, get a little bit of shit with it, and then you can, you know, be like, this is, you know, this is, uh, it's not that, you know, you're mixing white with brown, which gives you like, a, I guess like a little coffee color, cream, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag, but these are just some of the benefits of, again, jizzing in the mouth, the vag, and the asshole and I personally think these are very important issues that need to be discussed today specifically on the day that it is Friday that's right it needs to be discussed today no no other day it's just today we're probably gonna come back to it at one point or another I'm not gonna lie to you it's not just today it's not gonna stop right here it'll continue going boys and girls ladies and gentlemen I hope you're doing well, you sexy sons and daughters of bitches. I took the time and I said to myself, what are the people of the planet waiting for? What could we all use a little bit more of? And I says to myself, everybody loves pants. Man, they are excited about the show honking. They're like, oh, we are honking because that we can't, we're driving clearly, they can't clap or whistle or queef. They're showing their love with honking. You're like, that's just, that, how do we know that's not traffic? It's not, there's no traffic. It literally, is, it's all love. Everybody is honking because they love the show and because they're letting me know that they're gonna go home and subscribe as soon as they get a chance. As soon as they've gotten home, fuck their partner, they're gonna subscribe. And they let me know, through honking which i appreciate shout out to all the bus drivers big fan mutual love and respect but let's not get sidetracked we're here today and one of the things that i man a beautiful truck is just it's it's behind you now you you won't be able to see it but the noise is evident that I'm out here and there's a truck. Oh man, lots of noise today. Well, that's great, that's what we do. We deal with the noise, it's okay. Lots of people walking by too, I'll tell you. It is exciting. Rollerblading, walking, walking with pets. It's all great. We love it all. One of the most important things that I thought about 
and figure that people need in this day and age are our pants but not just regular pants everybody loves pants everybody loves shorts but what if what if you had pants that shrank throughout the day from the time you put them on all the way up until nighttime and eventually by the time you were ready to go to bed they were already turned into shorts pants that turn into shorts ladies and gentlemen welcome you're welcome congratulations congratulations nasa congratulations pentagon congratulations world just a giver with a heart of gold that gold not mold a heart of mold might have some mold i'm actually not sure to be honest with but a giver nonetheless pants that turn into shorts because how many times have you been walking around throughout a summer day and you're like man these pants are great in the morning when we got a little bit of shade and by noon it's already a lot it's, it's already hot and it's already sunny and by the time it's the afternoon you are chafing you are chafing hard and you're sweating and your balls and your long beautiful hairy labias are flapping against your thighs which is lovely but what if i told you those pants shrank and gave your beautiful long hairy labias a little bit of more breathing room and you didn't have time to go home and change exactly that's why we've introduced the all new and improved shrinking pants that shrink all the way up to your beautiful inner thighs you beautiful thunder thighs you Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Friday. And I've not just stopped with pants. When I put my mind to inventing things, I invent a lot of things. I, I ask around and I'm like, oh man, what, what, what do the people want? You know what the people want? You know what the female population wants? Ladies, this one's for you. Let me ask you this. Do you find yourself to be somebody who has ovaries, a cervix, some uh, piping? Are you bleeding once a month for approximately three to seven days, give or take a few days here and there? Who knows how many days you're bleeding for? I know. You're like, how does he know about us bleeding for three to seven days? Because I listen. More than I talk, I listen. Guess what? You've been bleeding on white pads and white tampons. Ask yourself this question for a second. Let's just let's just ask ourselves a very simple question. What color is the blood? That's coming out of your vagina today. Let's just let's just put that there for a second. Let's just take a moment. And what, what color is the blood that you're bleeding from your fat, meaty pussy? Is it white? Don't think so. Is it orange? I don't think so. Is it blue? Not unless you're a lizard, no. Is it green? I don't fucking think so. What color is it? It's bright red. So why are we bleeding on white pads, ladies? Why are we bleeding on white pads? How many times must you look at your clean white pad and see blood covering that white pad? making it look as if it needs to be changed just because you got a little bit of spotting i need to change my pad you'll say why because they've psychologically programmed you to have a white background with with some blood on it and all of a sudden you're like oh it's time for me to change my pad no more gone are the days of bleeding on white pads I personally am sick and tired of it. Uh, some things are just obvious and it's right in front of our eyes.
And the answer to this little riddle is to go with red pads. Red pa red pads. That's lots of noise, but that's the way we like it. Moving forward, all period pads, all tampons should be made with the color red. That way you can bleed all over it. Bleed as much as you like all over your pad. I don't care if it comes with extra wings. I don't care if it comes with extra wide wings. I don't care if it comes wingless. I don't care if it comes with chicken wings. You can bleed all over these pads and they'll be red from the get-go so that you're not thrown off by looking at your red pad and thinking, oh, I gotta now change because it used to be white, but now it's red. If we start off with red, you can bleed for seven days on the same pad. That's the same pad for seven days. How much money could you be saving? Ask yourself this. Could you be putting that towards a down payment on a house perhaps? Maybe. Could you be buying a new car? Yes. Could you be buying yourself a sex robot? Yes. Could you be buying yourself a yacht, maybe a used one, maybe not a brand new yacht. I'm not in the yacht market, but yes, extra money in your pocket because you don't have to waste money thinking that your white pad needs to be discarded. Keep it. If it's red, it'll all blend in. Blend in, that's the name of the game, blend in. You don't want it to just be like, oh no, I got a little red spot. I need to toss this out. You don't need to. You literally don't need to. I'm changing the game. If you like red pads, leave a comment. Because I think if we all rise together and raise our voices and let it be heard, change could be brought forth. We could have the change that we like. Red pads for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Tired of finding yourself late at night? Searching for a glory hole to go to? And not even sure who's behind it? That's kind of that's the whole point of glory holes, I suppose. I'll tell you one thing. If I'm not mistaken, most glory holes were for, for dudes, by dudes, from what I'm gathering, if I'm not mistaken. What if I said we could make glory holes for all people? Heterosexuals, straight glory holes. And what if I told you you don't need to leave? Or maybe you don't need to travel as far. What if I told you we could have portable glory holes? Glory holes on wheels that will travel half the distance to you. And you know for sure it's, it's going to be a woman behind that glory hole, not just, not just anyone. Beautiful. Solving the world's most complicated problems together with one podcast. Doing it, doing it as a global syndicate, as a, as a family. I'm thinking we could have portable glory holes I would also like to add a mystery element to it. An already existing mystery element does live within the glory hole realm because you don't know who's behind that. But I'm, I'm thinking, if you're just looking for a little sucky sucky licky licky and you wanted to play a little bit of a guessing game, like, you know, you know, some people like to be walking down the street and seeing a little stand with cups of soda on it and, and having the opportunity to be asked won't you taste test this soda and tell us if it's coke or pepsi and you'd like to and you'd like to taste test the soda and be like ah, that's, ah, i know coke that, that for sure is coke right there 
and they tell you it's Pepsi, and you're like, yeah, it blew my mind, crazy. What if I said the same concept could be applied to glory holes? Mystery glory holes on the go, where you don't know what's behind that glory hole. Could it be a dog? Maybe. Could it be a toothless gorilla? Maybe. Could it be a 75-year-old grandma? Maybe. Could it be a hot 25-year-old woman? Maybe. But it's all a big roll of the dice. And you won't know until you've come and checked it out. Literally, until you come and you checked it out. You gotta, you gotta come. You can't not come. It's the glory hole, you have to come. It's the way it works. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, too often we are intimidated by the fact that we've gotta to travel to places. We've got to, oh, I got to go find me. What if the glory holes had wheels on them? So you could just like push it, use it and push it down to whichever intersection you like. They're like food stands, but for glory holes. That's right. Portable glory holes. Bringing jobs back to North America. One step at a time. Father's Day this weekend I believe uh, shout out to all the fathers your father held you in his nuts he laughed at your farts father if you think about it carried you in his nuts for at least a couple of decades without any sort you never heard about it you never heard about all oh, like oh i carried you in the sack for a couple of decades you, you won't hear that you, you'll never hear that but but it's true and they, they they don't talk about it but i'm here i'm here to remind you that if you are here today joining us you myself included everybody in the sack for at least a decade and some for the most at least a couple of decades for the majority of people some people a decade and you know cl closing in on a few decades you know that's the way you hope for at least like you know unless you're like an extremely young father and you became a teenage father then again you've only had it which i don't condone or hope but there it's reality some people do end up being teenage parents you know it's difficult it's not easy but that sometimes happens too but overall i'm just talking about fathers and their dick game and their determination not to pull out because they don't believe in that shit uh shout out to all the dads if you are a dad if you are becoming a dad if you're thinking about it uh congratulations if you have a dad with you in pro close proximity Give them, a, give them a hug, squeeze their nuts, punch them in their nuts for a second and just watch them grab their nuts and be like, ah, oh, oh, you got me there. And that's some, that's, those are some methods you could bond with your dad. And also show them that you love them. And also make sure that they, make sure that, they're, that, they, that they know that. And if you've got, a, if you've got two dads, like let's say you've got a dad and a stepdad. Let both of them know that you love them. Let's say you got three dads. Let's say your let's say your first dad, biological dad. You got that dad. And then let's say you got a stepdad. Let's say your mom's got divorced and got another step. You got another man married again. You got three dads. Or let's say you had one biological dad. He left, your mom got married, so you got a stepdad with your mom, so now you got two, but your dad turns out to be gay. Now he's got a, now he's got a man, mid 40s, reaching 50s, mid, mid 40s, 50s, gay dad, gets a man, gets married. Now you have three dads, congratulations. You have three dads, two gay dads and one straight dad. Um, let's say, 
you've got let's say you've got a let's say you've got a free-spirited family and they're just they're just loose with it and they're they're, they're into communal upbringings and let's say you live in a commune with seven other families you have seven potential dads they didn't they didn't build you or create you with their jizz or nothing but you've spent five to ten years living with these people and you rely on them and they take care of each other's children again showing the love with the honking man <laughs> right back at you brother right back at you feeling all the love it's eager the eagerness to get home letting me know that they're gonna go ahead and subscribe it's it's the little things that just pull on your heartstrings that show you that people come together for beautiful things so if you are nonetheless all I'm trying to say is that if you got them if you got the if you got that male figure and fuck it maybe your dad died at very like you know very early on and you're maybe maybe you never saw your dad or maybe you didn't spend enough time with your dad there's no shame in grabbing a mannequin and dressing him, dressing him like the way you'd like your dad to look like and that could be your that could be your dad sex robots could all if you're not fucking that sex robot dress that up the way you'd like your dad to look like it could easily be your sex dad robot is it okay to fuck your step is it okay to fuck your sex robot that happens to be your part-time dad in terms of you know if the beautiful thing about robots is that they're not humans but what even is he what is the human experience the more we question these things about robots it's like the more we peel back the layers of the onion that is the human experience so is it okay to fuck your sex robot which also happens to be your part-time dad i don't know how you compartmentalize these things frankly it sickens me to my core but if it makes you a better person, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? So go ahead. Fuck your sex robot dad. And then, but like, don't tell people. But also live your life free. Tell, tell, tell everyone. If you are right now, making love to your sex robot who happens to be your part-time dad let them know that you love them they're like they don't know what love is they know man the ai knows it'll eventually know it might not know now but it will eventually it will know and it could be loving in a robotic way a cold hearted calculated robotic way driven by nothing but algorithms and logic so it'll most likely tell you what's best for you which is actually the It'll give you advice that you should be listening to, most likely. Because robots know best. They will know best. Like, they, they don't know now, but they will later down the line. You know what I mean? They will for sure know what's best down the line. Maybe not right now immediately, but... Like, they'll know. So go ahead and do that. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. Man, oh man. Beautiful day out here. Let's go ahead and talk about something that no one's ever talked about improving. Talk about your bed. Talk about your bed. Think about it. For most of your life, you've been living in a world where, where they tell you you should be sleeping on a mattress. Sure, they up the size. Started off with a single, moved on to a double, then a triple, then a queen, then a triple queen, then a king queen, then a then a then a king, then a then a queen mattress that queefs, then a, a queen mattress that'll make you feel like you're a royalty, despite the fact that your mattress might just be on the floor, you still feel like royalty because you're sleeping on a queen mattress or a double queen, which is like you're you're the queen of two kingdoms double the luxury double the comfort you're like a king you're sleeping like a fucking king that's that's good 
Rent keeps going high. Mortgages are outrageous. People can't afford homes. But you're sleeping like a king. Congratulations, king. You're killing it in life. At least for six to eight hours. What does a king sleep on if we're sleeping on the king's mattress? I suppose he's sleeping on peasantry match peasants mattresses made for kings. So they too know what it feels like to be human. That they should have a peasant mattress. But but I skipped that entire step. I said to myself, forget luxury, forget the bloodline, forget the fact that they are better than us. Or, or they say that they're better than us. Forget the forget hierarchies. I said that to myself. I'm like, forget forget pyramid schemes. I said that too. I said, forget the tip of the iceberg. I said, forget forget it. Um, and melt the ice. That's what I said. Melted ice. Who could have used some melted ice? I said that too. Top of the pyramid. Let's get to the top of the pyramid. I said, fuck it. I don't want to go to the top of the Fuck the top of the pyramid. I hate the top of the pyramid. Because it's, it's pointy. And if you fall and land asshole or vag first, you're most likely to pick up an injury. I like to be at the bottom of the pyramid. Where it's mostly flat. And spacious. That's got lots of room. And wherever I fall, I know my, my asshole's gonna be intact. So shout out to all the ones at the bottom of the pyramid. But flip it and reverse it. I said to myself, mattresses have been the same for almost 250 years, but that can all change with your help. Introducing liquid sleeping solutions. Did you ever wonder what it feels like to sleep like a baby, an actual fucking baby, instead of just being sold uh, lies, left light, and oh, you're gonna be sleeping like a baby on this king's mattress. Sure, he jizzed a little bit on it. If you flash a little bit of that black light, you can see a lot of the king's jizz because it's the king's mattress. And, that, and there's the there's the blood stain from the time that the queen was free bleeding because she's too good to wear a pad. There, there is that blood stain. That there, there it is. No more of that. But they tell you you're gonna be sleeping like a baby. But I don't think so because babies sleep in the womb and the womb is wet it's just a wet it's just a wet bag if anything babies are sleeping like goldfish in a in a bowl filled with water that's the closest thing that's the closest thing a baby's sleeping like a fish in a bowl which is nice so i said to myself how could us us humans how could us mature grown adults sleep like babies like actual fucking babies and i and i narrowed it down i'm like what are the key components liquid liquid a bag some sort of a some sort of a vessel that can hold liquids and then umbilical cord but they they rob you of that within the first few minutes of your life they rob you of your umbilical cord without your consent what if i wanted mine what if i wanted my shriveled up umbilical cord to be just loosely just lingering on throughout my daily activities. How much of a confidence boost would that be? Imagine showing up to family dinners with your loose, shriveled up umbilical cord, 27 years old. Just what are you up to, Jeff? Nothing, but still holding on to that shriveled up umbilical cord like a fucking king. And you're gonna be sleeping like a baby too. Showing up to meetings, just oh, closing deals with your umbilical cord intact. But you've been robbed of that experience and sleeping like a full baby. But I said to myself, no more. If I've got something to do with it, these motherfuckers are going to be sleeping like babies in no time. A vessel filled with preservative liquid. Maybe, maybe placenta. Something that'll make you feel younger. I don't know. Uh, period juice. Urine. Essential bodily fluids that we tend to get rid of but are essential. Fill it up with all that jazz. Fill it up with the liquids. Get a tube. Get a funnel. Get a tube. Put it inside your mouth. Then, then lower yourself into this body of water, or like a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a dunk tank. Kind of like a dunk tank, but mixed with great fluids. Stick a tube in your mouth, and then stick the other end of the tube outside of the dunk tank and that way you could actually breathe underwater so that way when you're sleeping at nighttime for six to eight hours you're dipped in liquid but you still get to breathe 
make sure you put duct tape around your mouth because you don't want to just be waking up in the people are not used to this i don't want people choking to death and then coming back and suing us saying that he said i'm glad you made you should go duct tape i always said duct tape time stamp this he said duct tape and i should say this i'm not charging anyone you can do this with it you can make your own dunk tanks get a tube get like a hose get a garden hose stick one end in your mouth the deeper inside your mouth the harder it is for it to come undone sure you might gag a little bit at first you're like i won't gag i don't believe in the gag reflex i don't believe i'm an anti-gagger they've tried to get me to gag i've never gagged you're that type of lady or fella to each their own i'm a big fan of your work to be honest with you and good on you guess what you're going to be the first amongst us who's going to be falling asleep like a baby with no gagging issues because you don't have a gagging reflex fantastic dip yourself lower yourself into this liquid and let your body just fall asleep go you're like what if i float to the top for best practices it's always good to carry a bag of cement. A bag of cement will make you way more. That way you will sink to the bottom. But you're like, what if I want to float? Then don't carry the bag of cement then. Wear some sort of, you know, wear something that will help you float, like a floating device. Then dip yourself into the water. Then you can really say, man, oh man. I've slept like a baby, like an actual baby. You're welcome, everybody. Again, showing their love through honking, letting me know that they're big fans of the show, although this is... But everybody's a fan of this show. It's one of the greatest, it's one of the biggest shows on planet Earth, so I'm not, I'm not out here surprised by the honking. I'm not like... You know? So I'll say that. I'll say this and I'll say that. But uh, the beautiful thing is that we're out here today and we're enjoying each other's beautiful company. So whatever you're doing out there, make sure to keep it tight. Make sure to, make sure to always keep it tight. Man, how tight should you keep it and where, where to find the tightness? That is the puss. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's finding the, finding the right puss is like, you, you, you often catch yourself relating to Cinderella out there. Oftentimes you'd be like, man, I've seen the cartoon, I've seen the movie, I've seen the story, I've heard the story. Lady has shoes, goes to a social gathering, a gala of sorts, dances in the shoes, leaves the shoe behind. An actual or metaphorical prince picks the shoes up, happens to be a foot fetish kind of fella sniffs the shoes falls in love with the smell of the shoes goes home jerks off in the shoes thinks to himself man these are the best pair of shoes i've just did classic cinderella story and then goes off into the village or the city metropolis where the fuck he lived and now he's got to come and ask, and this is before Facebook, this is before IG, this is before Twitter, where this is before all, you know, this is before Yellow Pages. I had to gather all the bitches around, one by one. I had to pay him off, sign NDAs. Won't you put these shoes on and let me get a whiff of these feet? Can you put your foot inside, put your foot inside my mouth for a second? I'd like to suck your toes, he'd say that. Can I suck your toes? And that was the invention of the art of sucking toes. How do you suck toes? And that's a story within a story. Start off with just a pinky toe. The smallest toe there is. Then, little by little, get that second toe in there. If you find yourself gagging, do not stop. Three toes. Let's go. Three toes. You're getting a little bit of you get you're getting a little bit of mucus spit as you're gagging again. I can't do this anymore. 
four toes. It's time to go four toes. You're like, oh, it's about to, you're about to throw up. Push yourself. Put the big toe in your mouth. Five toes in your mouth now. And that's the easy part. I'm just messing with you. That's the hard part. Uh, the only, the, that, the hard part has just begun. Because anybody can suck toes. But now it's time to put the entire foot in your mouth. Go ahead and ingest the five toes that you've been sucking on. Ingest the foot. Put the foot all the way inside your deep throat, the foot. Heel must be not, you must be heel, heel, heel in your mouth now. Ankles, ankles. The gateway has now opened up. Shove the ankles inside your mouth. Shove it inside your mouth. Work your way up to the calves. Swallow the calves. You have now swallowed an entire calf. You're knee deep. And the knee is deep inside. Knee deep inside you. You're like, how can I go on further? Work on the thighs. Add lube, lube to the thighs. Push the thighs further down your throat, all the way up to the upper thighs. You're getting close to the butt. You're getting close to the ass. It was much easier swallowing toes now that you think about it, but you're now close to swallowing an entire ass chick. You're like, I am full. It's all head games. Don't psych yourself out. Open up, swallow the ass cheek, but now you're halfway through the torso. Push the torso in your mouth, in it, just push it out. Find an object, a solid, maybe a wall, a tree trunk. Push, the, push their head against the tree trunk or a wall. Swallow the torso, fold the arms in, fold the arms in. Do not go arm out. Arms out is very difficult. Tuck the arms in. Sw and once you've tucked the arms in, you're almost home. Swallow the entire neck, the entire neck, the head. The head is the last remaining part and the part that a lot of people have trouble swallowing. Swallow the head, close your mouth, and that is how you successfully suck toes. Having said that, this was about Cinderella and fighting the right puss. Finding the right puss could be very similar to finding Cinderella. You've tasted one puss, and it's, or you dreamt about this one puss, and, it, and, the and the dream felt like real life. Perhaps it was, so now you wake up and you ask yourself, I gotta get out there and find Find the right puss, the right, the, the tightest puss out there. You tell yourself that. How do you do this? Very simple. Gather them, gather all of them. Gather all the bitches in the city, in the town, in the country. Try them one by one, one by one, and tell them what you're there for. Try them out for size, try them out for flavor, try them out for, again, size is probably what you're going for, because it, it must, fit like a slipper or like a shoe if it fits like a shoe if it fits like a glove or a sweater if it fits if the fit is right essentially but this is the tragedy here is that it's not like a melon where you can knock on it and just be like I can tell which one is the perfect puss by simply knocking on it simple knocking will not suffice so if you've learned anything here today it's that is that together we are accomplishing many great amazing things uh keep on rocking and rolling in this beautiful life whatever you're doing in and around this beautiful planet uh thank you for joining me once again it's been another social production it's friday i'm about to enjoy the weekend and get out there and do some things but i'll be back here again next wednesday like not here here 
but here inside your hearts and inside your minds. And thank you for being inside my heart and my mind. Where can you find these videos? On Instagram. Follow me there if you like. Subscribe on the old YouTube channel if you like to find the full length videos. Check out patreon.com slash Rob Sadger if you like to fiscally, financially support this show to see it grow right before your eyes. I love you all and I'll be back here next week. Get out of here.